Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome President, Products and Technologies Red Hat, Paul Cormier. You know, I know I say this every year, so forgive me, but it's just incredible. When we look back at, you know, where we started from here and to look around the room and look at the changes we're making as an industry, it just, uh, it just never ceases to amaze me. So, but what I'm going to talk about today is, I really want to talk about that. I really want to talk about the changes that we're all making together and what that's meaning to us, not as just an open source community, not as just one or two companies, but as an industry. I left off last year where I said the application is king and the OS is the heartbeat. It's exactly where I left off last year. So much has happened in open source in the enterprise since then. It's almost in open source lives, open source years that you look at this. A lot's happened. Since we last met, if you look at it, VMware has announced that they're now going to get into the con Linux container operating system business, a far, a far cry from just a few years ago when they said the OS was dead. You look at Microsoft. Microsoft has completely embraced Linux on its Azure platform and seen it grow. Certainly a change from just a two years ago. And IDC, recent IDC stats have shown that there are only two operating systems in the data center today, Windows and Linux. What a moment. You know, this is, this is something that we live by. This is hung in our offices for over for almost 15 years now. In Red Hat, with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, we, we went through every single stage of Gandhi's insight on this. And as we've gone through every stage of this, we check it off. We look at this every morning when we come in in the morning. And I'm here to tell you today that Linux and the open source community have won, and they've, they've, they've um, completed the Gandhi quote here. We can now check that last box of Gandhi's insight. Linux has won in the data center. One of two in the data center. Think about that. But now, all of our job, all of our job, we're not near satisfied. We've just gotten started. Now our job is to take open source all the way across the infrastructure and the application development infrastructure in the enterprise. And if you look at it, if you really look at it today, open source today is solving some of the most complex problems in software. Let's take a look at what's driving that, and let's talk about how these projects might follow the same path as the OS that Gandhi talked about. What's driving all this? Business demands today are, are just demanding efficient, efficiency, agility, and innovation from the technology partners. This is what, exactly what's driving the technology trends of today. It's the business that's driving this. Cloud, mobile, and big data with the convergence of infrastructure and platform as a service, infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, really brings the line between the operations people and the developers together. It really brings those lines blurring almost and into one motion. These are some of the initiatives, these are some of the open source initiatives that are really driving this today and completely driving the DevOps, the DevOps push that you hear and read and see so much about today, everywhere. You know, these demands are, are causing a seismic shift in the IT industry. You just ask any IT professional about that. It's causing them to move very quickly from monolithic apps to dynamic apps that need to scale on demand. From open source being perceived as risky, not secure, not in the mainstream, not enterprise ready, to just mainstream, being widely adopted, one of two in the data center. Amazing. From, from a really a compute-centric model to a software-defined model where infrastructure across compute, 
networking and storage is now software divine, the, defined. From very long innovation cycles to very compressed innovation cycles. And to really looking at IT as a cost center to IT as a competitive advantage to the business. This is really what's driving a lot of these technology trends of today. But you know, from these communities of diverse interest comes rapid innovation. This is what open source does best, is rapid innovation. Pure open platforms are platforms that the world can build upon. That is the model that lots of people miss. This is not about just seeing the source code. This is about sharing. This is about innovation on top of innovation on top of innovation. This is about solving problems that are just too big for one company to solve alone. That's what you're seeing out there with open source. This is the open source model that brought Linux to the enterprise in a relatively short time. The compute, data storage, and, network, and networking and changing application model are all elements that are building the cloud and the applications that run on that cloud. Those are the pieces that are driving this. But you know, as business demands move and technology responds, how do we rapidly respond to new problems such as, are all apps going to have to be stateless in this new world? How do apps run consistently across this new infrastructure? I've heard some people even say, is infrastructure going away? Is it just going to be magic? How do OS technologies have to change to adopt to this? Even questions about what is the role of the OS in this new changing model. And one of the big ones that needs to be there for this to succeed is what are the security implications in this new model? Let's start and let's talk about where we are with the compute layer and how we got to where we are with the compute layer. First and foremost, Linux is the, com is the compute layer that the cloud is built on. End of story. No argument. That's just the way it is. Linux is really formed from the rapid development of many open source projects. I mean, Jim mentioned this last night. There is not one Linux community. It is the collaboration of many communities to come together and form a high-performing op operating system called Linux. This has rapidly changed the way that industry innovates and develops software. The industry now innovates on that Linux platform. It's innovation on top of innovation on top of innovation. 12 plus years ago, we at Red Hat brought Linux to the enterprise. And we brought it there with a model and an ecosystem that has made it into one of the two leading OSs in the data center today and of the future. But you know, we had a few bumps in the road along the way. VMware got in there, and they did a very good job of innovating with virtualization at this layer. And they were the first to bring virtualization to the, to the, to the compute layer of both Windows and Linux. But they tried to control it and stifle it with the proprietary lock-in model. But with such a powerful, powerful open source development model already gaining steam and, ha and gaining momentum with, with Linux, that community responded to this. And they brought KVM virtualization to the Linux compute layer and opened it completely back up. So we took a little bump in the road there for a couple of years, but now the community just opened it all back up for us. And just as we did with RHEL, what we think our role in this is as a company, Red Hat responded. And we brought Rev to the enterprise with a combination of Linux and KVM virtualization in a model that they could consume and move it into their critical production lo loads. Now what really happened along the way here Having, with the community out there, having that very powerful combination of Linux and an open virtualization um, layer, we really gave that community a powerful platform to continue to innovate on. And this is what led to the building of the cloud. The ubiquitous cloud just would not be here without Linux 
in open virtualization. That's just a fact. You just can't argue with that. But public cloud providers, what they did on top of that, they began to build on top of that Linux and open virtualization layer and built a scalable infrastructure and offered cloud service out to the world. But CIOs now wanted that same power behind their firewall and under their control. The OpenStack project was formed to deal with this, to deliver on this. And we at Red Hat did what we do. We, we got involved with it. We heavily participated with that OpenStack project upstream. As always, we contributed 100% of our developed code back to the upstream to keep that innovation going and keep the model vibrant and moving. And as it was designed and developed and built on Linux, we brought it to the enterprise, developed and deployed and delivered on RHEL. With, with RHEL's life cycle and RHEL's vast ecosystem that made it acceptable in the enterprise, that made it usable in the enterprise, that made it really relevant for running critical enterprise workloads. And we brought this out to our customer base. This is what we do. And now what you're seeing across this with, with RHEL and with these products, you're seeing the four footprints of the infrastructure of the data center of now and the future. We've talked about this for a long time. Physical, virtual, private, and public cloud, all built with compatible versions of RHEL, giving the application a consistent, predictable, and in performing platform to run upon. That's very, very important as this now becomes the infrastructure that data center managers have to worry about and, and manage as one. Across each of these footprints is what we think makes up the hybrid cloud. And this is what operations groups now look at as their infrastructure to deploy apps and manage those apps and secure those apps. But what happened as well while all this was going on is the movement really started to get some steam. And while the operations people were building out their hybrid cloud for more efficiency, Open source development continued to gain steam even on the application side. The application developers started up many new projects of their own to solve some of their problems, to move them further along in their open development. But the applications developers, they had a huge advantage. They had a, a world-class performing platform to develop on, Linux. And in their mission to move, the development stack needed to build commercial apps from the world of a complete proprietary lock-in model to the world of an open applications model where, where applications were being built on pure open source technologies. That was their mission. They needed app servers, tools, libraries, and they wanted it all in an open development model. When they started, some of the favorite languages of the developers were built completely in open source. And this, but this initially led to the building of apps that were mostly monolithic, and thus con contained within the four walls of the server. This was really the first generation of applications that were built on pure open source platforms, and pure open source tools, and pure open source languages. But I think what happened along the way with people realized very, very quickly that applications constrained to the four walls of a server are very limiting. But as open protocols such as HTTP developed, we saw a whole new set of technologies that enabled us to br bridge servers, data centers in the entire world. This really formed the foundation of the internet as we know today on open source. And it happened at a rate that had never, ever, ever been able to be accomplished with the proprietary development process. Again, just too big of problems to be solved by one company. With that foundation to build upon, frameworks sprung up, and, and they further empowered developers uh, to build more powerful applications. These, the power of these frameworks really allowed the developers to build the modern web that has driven us all the way out to the cloud today. 
So the next logical place for the open source movement to take place and open source innovation to solve real problems, problems was to displace the lock-in development technologies within the enterprise. Op but open source once again had to invent new things. They had to provide ca capabilities in new areas such as human workflows, rules, message messaging, and mobile. But just as we saw in the innovation of, the o of open source software in getting us to the web, the JBoss community sprung up, and they responded. And they did the same to expand the app development area, and they moved us out of the four wall applications within the four walls of a server. And once again, we did what we did, what we do. Red Hat responded with an entire set of enterprise class products within the JBoss family, built entirely from open source development heritage and upstream innovation. This set of capabilities brought the enterprise app developer the capabilities they were, that were previously only found in the proprietary stacks without the limiting and costly lock-in of those proprietary stacks. The open source model brought the technologies once limited only to web developers to the enterprise developer. This brought to the enterprise in less than a decade what previously took the proprietary guys 40 plus years. Think about that, the movement on that, the speed on that, the innovation on that. So now what was happening with the app development being largely driven on open source software, and the infrastructure and the operations guys being largely driven on open source software, they really needed a, a way to connect these two to really take advantage of the power of the next generation. This might be where the, where the term DevOps that you hear so much about first started. One of the new technologies that sprung up from open source software was containers. I mean, containers have been around in other operating systems for a long time. But the time in the place that we're bringing them in now with with the development out there, with the cloud out there, with the innovation out there, is really going to bring it to new heights. The containers are really developed to give the flexibility of the developer choices with portability across this changing infrastructure. It's connecting developers and operations in a way that we've never been able to accomplish before. These have always been two islands that really slowed down innovation. Connected now will just bring that innovation that we've seen in open source for so many years. Last year, I talked about how containers were built. This year, I'm going to talk about how we bring containers to the enterprise. And I'm here to announce just that. One of our new products that we're really excited about, excited about is Red Hat Atomic Enterprise Platform, bringing a manageable, scalable platform for apps developed with containers, com providing container platform for the operations guys that they can trust just as they trust RHEL today, running anywhere in their own data center all the way out to the public cloud. The next announcement we're making today is OpenShift V3. It's very significant because we're bringing those same RHEL containers that we bring to the operations guys to the OpenShift platform with all the deployment, orchestration, and management, as well as the tools, frameworks, libraries, and services that developers need to bring next-gen hybrid apps. The key thing on here that I talked about and is so key is the consistency because RHEL containers across these same platforms. That's the consistency of the app, and it's all about the app. The, com the combination of these platforms now bring the capability with containers to any enterprise with manageability, lifecycle, security, and development tools and services. From apps development to operations, they'll embrace all the needs for commercial deployment. You'll hear much more about these two new products at the summit. I absolutely urge you to dig on, in on these. These are some of the most exciting products that we've brought, brought to the market. 
this year, and we're very excited about these products. But you know, as with any technology, technology paradigm shift as large as we're in right now, many unanswered questions exist and will be out there. Let's try to look at some of those questions. And why are these questions coming up? Because everything in, these everything in this paradigm shift needs to scale dynamically. We can never, ever depend on a human to rack a server or cable a switch anymore. It just takes too much time for the dynamic needs of the application. It, the rate of change in this world with applications that applications have to respond to is just too fast. But this also raises questions on how well equipped you are to have your infrastructure respond in this way. The first question we hear inevitably, are you going to have to rewrite all your applications to be stateless due to storage limits, limitations? Storage is still in the proprietary lock-in model of yesteryear and just starting to move into the openness of innovation. Well, the answer, of course, is no. The open source community has been working on this problem for a number of years. With, with exciting projects, open source projects such as Ceph and Gluster. And of course, what we do at Red Hat, we bring products based on those corresponding open source projects to the enterprise. We're bringing this capability to the enterprise today to start to build out this hybrid environment. The next question we hear all the time is, when will, when will SDN and open networking really be available? I'm telling you, it's now. The two built into the two platforms that I just announced are the networking capabilities to interact with a multitude of SDN pro products from many of our partners, to scale at whatever level you're ready to scale at and beyond. The next one is how will your operations staff be able to manage from monolithic to next generation applications across the physical, virtual, private, and public cloud hybrid network of today. Once again, the open source community is, has been on these for some time. These management challenges are being worked on every day in, in, in open source projects such as Manage IQ, Pulp, Foreman, Cateo, and Red Hat is bringing these products to you in cloud forms and satellite products today. With a combination of these technologies and these products, you can run your application across any environment in that hybrid world today. But one of the biggest questions out there is, can we run containers in a secure environment? Lots of times these new technologies spring up and everybody gets very excited about them, but they don't think about the production issues down the road. And security is one of those production issues. If we can't deploy these, in a secure manner, they just won't go. They just won't be accepted. And that's where containers come in. You know, while containers give us a huge change in how that content is introduced to the your enterprise, it absolutely does, does not stop the need for that content to be secure. Introducing via a container one of the serious vulnerabilities such as shell shock or poodle or venom would be as devastating as introducing that into your Linux server farm of today. But the what we've done is the certification process with RHEL that you've been relying on for years, we've extended that to a container content. So if containers from Red Hat or a certified partner will bring the same level of security as Bare Bones RHEL has brought to the enterprise for years. I contend that secure, the security that RHEL has bought, brought has been one of the major factors in its success, and containers need it as much. It is operating system technology. So really, with the introduction today of Red Hat Atomic Enterprise and OpenShift V3, combined with the capabilities that we have today in RHEL OpenStack, satellite and cloud forms, and Red Hat storage, we bring true DevOps to the enterprise today. Lots of people talk about this. There's lots of talk going on in the industry about DevOps. This is DevOps in practice today. And time will show 
that it just could not have happened without the innovation and the rapid development and the power of the open source development model. So I'm going to end where I started. One last slide. We can't let our guard down here. This has been, in my opinion, a fight against traditions of years and years and years. The proprietary guys do not want this change. They don't want open. Don't believe it. Open's not just seeing the code. Open's living it. Opening it opens making it your development process. Opens making taking every line of code that your engineers write and moving it back to be innovated on. That's what opens on. Ask the proprietary guys on that. We're not going to let them take us back. It's been, it's been a huge, huge battle to get here, and now we're starting to win. We're going to come back next year, and we're going to check that last box for the entire infrastructure, just as we did for the OS this morning. So with that, thanks very much. Have a great time at the summit. Thank you very much.